Mr. Sanders, Cornell West, who is a close ally of yours, he is running a third party campaign for president. He recently criticized you for endorsing President Biden's reelection. Listen to what he said. I love the brother and, and, and you know, you, even in love, people have deep disagreements about these things. But I think, again, he's he's fearful of the neo-fascism of Trump. People look at Biden. They don't really want to tell the full truth. He's created the best economy that we can get. Is this the best that we can get? You're going to tell that lie to the people just for Biden to win? What's your reaction to that? Well, my reaction is that it certainly is not the best economy that we can create. That was what my speech was about yesterday. We've got to join the rest of the industrialized world, guarantee health care at all. We've got to cut the cost of prescription drugs uh, in half. We've got to raise the minimum wage to at least 17 bucks an hour. We've got to build the affordable housing we desperately need. But where I disagree with my good friend, uh, Cornell West, is I think in these really very difficult times where there is a real question whether democracy is going to remain in the United States of America. You know, Donald Trump is not somebody who believes in, in democracy, whether women are going to be able to continue to control their own bodies. Can uh, we pause this really quick? Social justice. <laughs> because this is so, I mean, like, I'm caught between a rock and a hard place. Part of me is like, Oh, this is textbook Bernie. He's still the broken record. He's still going back to the same stump speech. Like, we need to get, go catch up with the rest of the industrialized world. We need to give everybody health insurance. We need to do all those things, right? Um, but then he's just like, but where I disagree with my good friend Cornell West is on supporting anybody that actually wants to do those things, right? And he goes into, he's talking about now he's in difficult times. Like, I just wish somebody would ask Bernie if he thought that we were in simple times when he decided to run for president against Hillary Clinton, when everybody said, these are difficult times. We are facing the very real, uh, you know, threat of neo-fascism. And of course, it's a little bit different because Cornell West is running outside of the Democratic Party, uh, but we're still in the primary season, you know, and he's already thrown his weight behind Joe Biden, which would be akin to throwing your weight behind Hillary Clinton and not his campaign. And it's like, dude, have you not taken a look around? Things that might be even worse than when you ran the first time. Like if there if now isn't the time, like what made it the time then when you lost twice? Like when you decided to do it, it was the time. But now that you're burnt out and you don't think you can get over the hump anymore. Now it's not the time for anybody to do it. That's it. That's such bullshit. This is one of the few times where it seems like. I don't know, like. I, I, I don't know. It, it, this is like he's really just left the entire movement behind. Right. Like there's no effort other than to rhetorically say things like, oh, I support Medicare for all. Uh, you know, how is he you know, how is he putting his money where his mouth is at all here? Well, let's just let's just play the devil's advocate, because I understand people's frustration. And I also you know, feel pretty frustrated about the way that Bernie has conducted himself and basically totally failed to continue leading the political revolution that he started after dropping out in 2020. And I think that all of those are very valid complaints, which lead people to take Bernie's comments here in a way that is, you know, really frustrating to them that really gets under their skin. But again, just to play the devil's advocate here for Bernie Sanders, I don't think this is terribly inconsistent with anything that Bernie Sanders has said or any conclusions that he's arrived at in, you know, basically the 21st century. I'm sure you can find clips of the of Bernie Sanders back in the 80s or 90s where he maybe had a different opinion on this stuff. Um, but I don't think finding a clip from 25 years ago is really the hypocrisy burn that people think it is. It's really, you know, just, yeah, people's opinions evolve over time. Their understanding of strategy evolves. But for over Bernie time. Sanders 25 years ago, he was already 55. That's fair. That's fair. I'm just saying that Bernie Sanders has been pretty consistent in modern times, like in the 21st century. The fact of the matter is, is that after he lost to Hillary Clinton, he did not endorse Jill Stein. Um, he has no history in recent times of endorsing third party candidates or Green Party candidates. And you can disagree with that as much as you want. I disagree with that. I wish Bernie had you know, gotten on the Green Party ticket in 2016 and all that. Um, but the fact that people are still mad at him like 10 years later for still having an opinion that he's had and still having the same strategic take that he's always had 
Uh, well, not always had, but always had since we've known the guy, since we've been invested in what he stands for and his movement. Uh, this has been his stance. So just assuming that he's going to change his mind this time around, I don't think is really fair to him. And the other reason I don't think it's really fair to him is because the analysis that he just gave of the situation, which is that. Yeah, I think that it's important to keep Donald Trump out of the White House. And as much as I think Joe Biden is inadequate, he's still far preferable. That was Cornell West's opinion in 2020. He was telling people the exact same thing. Okay, but can I p provide a little bit of pushback? Because I think that the crux of our disagreement rests on not the fact that in a general election, Bernie Sanders would decide to support somebody like Joe Biden or Hillary Clinton, which he did in both instances. But I think what has changed and what is the clear marked transition away, this is the first time since he came out onto the map and exploded in political popularity and started uh, you know, talking about a political revolution and big change uh, within the Democratic Party primary that he just bent over and without a fight at all during any primary season, uh, you know, did he roll over and just get out in front of it. And not only did he, you know, not him, uh, you know, that not only did he not endorse any of the other potential challengers. Right. Uh, but he also, in, you know, endorsed preemptively the major corporatists. So that is different. Right. That is what's different. He put up no fight during the primary, which is kind of his trademark. Right. Was that like, yes, we knew he was going to, you know, probably support whoever bested him during the primary. Right. But I, I would say that it would probably be more consistent for Bernie Sanders to put up a challenge during the primary than it would be to say for him to not put up a challenge during the primary, because he even considered doing so in 2012 against Obama. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I, like I said, I think that's fair. And I think if you include all of that context about how he's failed to continue leading the political revolution that he started, I think that's fair. And that these comments are just another, you know, it's just another example of him failing to be the leader that we wish that he continued to be post his campaign. Um, and I think there's a variety of reasons for that, including the fact that He's getting pretty old. His career is coming to an end. You know, we can make excuses all day. We could go into the context and maybe explain why Bernie doesn't have the same fire in him that he did in 2016. Um, but ultimately, I just didn't find these comments to be shocking or controversial like at all. I, this is exactly what I knew Bernie Sanders was going to say. Um, I think it was more scandalous if you want to be like you know scandalized by anything i thought it was more scandalous that bernie sanders basically just ignored the primary challenges of people like marianne williamson and just immediately jumped to endorsing joe biden and the reason i thought that was crazy is because like you said zach bernie clearly does think it's a worthy project to try to reform the democratic party from within and to try to do that via an insurgent progressive campaign i mean that's why he was on board with you know candidates like alexandria ocasio cortez and i don't see why he couldn't apply that same logic to a presidential primary coming from a leftist like marianne williamson i don't see why he couldn't be supportive of that sort of an insur insurgent challenge in the same way he was on a congressional level or as he's been for several candidates on a variety of different elected levels right um but he's never been a third party guy at least in the 21st century you'd have to go back to the fucking 1990s to find an example of him talking about that um and I, I you know you can you can disagree with that all you want you can say that you know i i think the third party route is the correct route that's i mean clearly i to some extent believe that that's why i advocate for third parties that's why i support cornell west that's why i've only ever voted for third party candidates um but clearly bernie just doesn't view that that is a good strategy he but then wouldn't his wouldn't his position be that he you know he's he's he, like he's upset with uh cornell west because he thinks that he should be running within the democratic party right and that 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 should be his uh you know disagreement with him not that it's just so appalling to even dare challenge joe biden in the face of whatever monstrosity the republican party can hawk up because that's literally him parroting the exact words that people used against him Right. Like that when when he goes and he says, like, oh, I had to endorse Joe Biden because there was too big of a threat. And this is what the president uh, or this is what the country needs. And this is who we can all you know, eye behind. Right. Even though it's uh, a complete it's not even a half measure. It's not even a quarter measure. It's just a fraction of what we need to accomplish. And yes, you can point to the NLRB and we'll get to one of their recent W's about how if there's uh, you know foul play, uh, then the company is forced to automatically recognize the union. And you can point to some small victories that, for uh, a Joe Biden you know, administration, Gavin and I have never, ever, ever said that you can't point to small victories, but it's a matter of, if, is that enough? And Bernie Sanders calculations have always been, no, that that's not enough. And during the primary time is when you reach the American people and you tell them, no, we demand more. Let's hit the streets. 
let's get voters that have never voted. Uh, let's register, you know, more Latinos uh, than we've ever registered before in the, uh, you know, state of Texas for the Democratic Party or, or whatever kind of records that they were, uh, you know, going after at that time. Right. And it just feels like this is a marked change. And I'm not surprised by it either. Right. Bernie's let us down. He's kind of shown us the kind of guy he is. But I think what is really like, you know, the bummer here for me and what I am like kind of like putting my fucking head in my palm is it's like he does like he, he starts off like the same old Bernie, like the broken record hitting the points that he does. Uh, but then he finishes like a finger wagger and like the kind of guy that would have like told you that he really agrees with Bernie, but we just can't have him. Uh, in the primary, no less. Uh, mm. and, and, and I think that Bernie's like kind of become what he detested, right? Like, like what's to stop him from like, you know, that's kind of like what Andrew Yang always would say. Oh, I believe in the spirit of Medicare for all, but it's just not the right time for that kind of shit. Like, I always hated that about him. And now to hear Bernie kind of echo that sentiment, it's like frustrating because obviously I know Bernie's heart's in the right place. I don't doubt that he's making these kinds of calls because he genuinely believes it's like you know his duty or like the best interest of the people i just think that he's fucking misguided and that bums me out because i expected more from him yeah yeah that's fair let's finish out this clip real quick and then we have a couple other pieces of the story to react to this in america we end bigotry around that i think we have got to bring the entire progressive community uh, to defeat trump or whoever the republican nominee will be support biden but at the same time which is what i did yesterday is demand that the Democratic Party, not just Biden, have the guts to take on corporate greed and the massive levels of income and wealth inequality that we see today. And I guess that the only other thing I would say, just a slight, you know, slight defense of Bernie here. Um, some people, including to some extent Cornell West, are, are acting like Bernie Sanders is just out here doing straight propaganda for biden acting like the economy is perfect and you know biden saved the day he's a totally progressive president i listen to bernie sanders interviews quite often whenever he speaks to the media and talks about the biden administration he's constantly critical of the biden administration of bidenomics of the democratic party's failure to return to the policies that would appeal to middle america to labor etc cetera, etc cetera. so i don't think it's fair to say that bernie is like just out here doing propaganda for Joe Biden, acting like he's some amazing president and never criticizing him. I think that Bernie Sanders is begrudgingly endorsing Joe Biden because he genuinely doesn't think that anyone else is viable. And, you know, in the process, he's trying to point out ways that the Democrats could do even better at appealing to working class people, poor people in middle America. Uh, so that's kind of what I see. And again, it's not even a strategy that I agree with. I'm not sitting here saying that I agree with Bernie Sanders. I mean, you guys know all the time I'm I'm constantly out here advocating for voting Green Party, especially if you live in a safe state. I think it's ridiculous to vote for Joe Biden. You know, if you live in fucking Alabama or in a, in a state like California where it doesn't matter who you vote for, then of course you should vote for Green party let's get them to five percent let's get them federal funding a hundred percent but the fact of the matter is is that bernie sanders does have a strategic disagreement with me i don't but think he was being... over the primary process entirely right like that, that's what i'm talking about that's what's really fr that's the thorn in my side is that he pretends like there is like he buys into their narrative that there is no primary this time and that joe biden is entitled to it and that's maddening to me right and that he that oh the only thing that you could possibly do besides vote for Joe Biden is to support a third party. He doesn't have a track record of supporting third parties, so I don't expect him to. Well, I would like it. I would agree with that. But that's not what the that's not what like the threshold, the bar that I would hold him to. What I would hold him to is that he would support an effort to challenge Joe Biden from the left during the Democratic Party primary, which he has a history of doing. Right. You know? And now that we don't see that from him, I think that that is that is a change, right? For him to buy into their framework and say that the, oh, why would we risk giving it to Donald Trump by only challenging within the Democratic Party? No, democracy within the Democratic Party makes it stronger, right? Having a real competition to see who should be the president makes the party stronger. It's only very recently that there's ever been this idea that like, oh, well, we're just not going to have a primary because somehow practicing democracy weakens our party and we should all stand behind this, you know, a uh, beloved leader, unified leader. Like that's scary. That's bullshit. That's anti-democratic. And and obviously, I don't think that Bernie is intentionally feeding into that, but he's 100% signing off on that narrative that the Democratic Party gets to control whether or not there is a primary, whether or not Joe Biden will face a challenger. And if they can do that this time, when can't they do that? And when Bernie Sanders is gone, there's not going to be the legacy of standing up to that that he could have brought because we all know nobody has more clout than this man within the progressive party or progressive party. We don't have one, but progressive movement, whatever's left of it, you know. Um, so that's what fucking fries me about this.
Yeah, no, I, I mean, I totally agree. Like I said, I wish that Bernie Sanders had not endorsed Joe Biden immediately. I wish that he had, you know, waited and uh, been more supportive of Marion Williamson, for example. I think I totally agree. I think that's totally unacceptable. Um, I just think it's kind of funny how people think it's crazy that, you know, Bernie Sanders is still not supporting the Green Party when we all know that's the case. We all knew that would be the case. And it's always been the case. Um, so I do think it's a little bit unfair for people to jump down his throat about it. But I agree, Zach. I mean, I also wish we would see him calling out the DNC more advocating for, you know, there to actually be a serious primary, et cetera, et cetera. I, I do totally agree with you, Zach. I just kind of wanted to, you know, no, I, I see coming the from. It for a good discussion. But yeah, at that time I was like, no, I'm taking the hammer to Bernie Sanders because it just fries my shit because I'm like, no, you don't have to. You, you could say like, like all I wanted from him from that fucking interview, all he had to do and, you know, is to say, look, like I disagree with Cornell West strategy to run as a third party candidate. However, he has every single right to my efforts will be spent within the Democratic Party primary trying to push Joe Biden to the left and hoping to see a challenger succeed. Like if he said that, I think that would have been a completely consistent with his fucking analysis in 2020 and 2016 when he was the one that wanted to challenge the establishment. Right. And even in 2020, when he hadn't quite made up the gumption to do it because Obama was so fucking beloved. Think about how beloved Obama was and he was thinking about doing it. And now you look at how unbeloved and how, uh, you know, just like mid everybody, even even if you pull the Democrats, only only like fucking 45 percent of them have like positive feelings about Joe Biden. I mean, it's really abysmal. So anyway, that's what I that's why I just took the devil's advocate on that, one because it does feel like we're getting uh, like less and less of the revolutionary fervor from Bernie Sanders, even as oh, time yeah. continues to move on. Like, you know, they're they're still wearing him down. They're still, you know, just scraping whatever's left of him against the concrete and whittling him and whittling him down. It's fucking sad to see.